Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury 333 with another exhibition match. Once again, Google Frog versus Acronym. Once again on Trojan Hills, and it looked like they've been playing something like a first of three or possibly best of three. I'm not quite sure which, but they are still playing, and they are once again Trojan Hills. Last match we saw Acronym lose after doing really well in a lot of combats, but their production they weren't producing enough. They were excessing metal. When they had, especially when they had an economic advantage, they had an economic advantage most of the early game, and they didn't use it. And then afterwards, they got scuttle dropped and didn't have the energy to reclaim after that, so they, they ended up just losing by attrition. So we'll see what they do this time, if they focus a bit more on their economy or if they go for another trick. But it looks like both players are going for Cloaky Bot this time. So Goo Frog is going to be starting out now in the south and Aquanum in the north flip positions from last time, but this map is radially symmetric, so that's not a big deal. Both also choosing to start in the aggressive position, which is common for 1v1. I occasionally see 1v1 players start out in the back position. I never see them start in this corner. I occasionally see the back position, but more often than not, it's this front area here. It's only in teams I really see this back position used frequently, where you have one person up in the front, one person in the back, and then the person in the back is usually the air or gunship player. And first meetup, neither player losing anything. Google Frog looks like they're gonna be getting first blood though. Yep, they do kill the first unit. Because Akonim unfortunately let that glaive go a bit too far, but now Akonim being scattered out and doesn't really know what Google Frog's up to. And wow, that's that's kinda painful, losing almost another glaive. Yeah, Akonim has already upgraded to light particle beam on their support comm, while Google Frog has not upgraded at all. They're just going with the standard strike comm and have not changed anything. So Akronim is probably... Are they going to go for Glaive and Tick again? I want to know, because I don't think they will. I mean, this is Cloaky versus Cloaky. It's kind of a standard match. You kind of go Glaive into Warrior Rocco. Or usually Glaive to Rocco, or sometimes Glaive to Warrior. It depends. Usually what I find is it's Glaive until one player figures that they can't micro past however many Glaives their opponent has. Or they can't micro that number of Glaives better than their opponent's number of Glaives. So then they switch to Warrior for crowd control. Or they switch to Rocco, assuming their opponent's going to switch to Warrior for crowd control. And then it's usually either Rocco Glaive or Rocco Warrior. And then after that, it, it changes from there depending on how the match goes. But that's usually how it starts out. So right now, it's in the Glaive stage. Akonim and Google Frogs trading blows. Nothing too major. Akonim right now, though, is not producing at all. Why are they not producing? They're not producing or expanding. They're kind of going idle. I think they might have forgotten to go infinite build. A repeat build. Google Frog is on repeat build. Repeat build normal priority, so that's interesting. Because that does mean that their production is not going to be dropped if they're producing economy. So their economy will be produced a little bit slower than Aquanim's. Assuming Aquanim is not producing anything. But at this point, Aquanim's entire... Like, the north side is blocked off right now. Google Frog patrolling around here, making sure that nothing can easily get in without them knowing about it. Or nothing can easily get in, period. And they'll certainly know about it. Now, Akonim's commander, interestingly using an economy commander as... Or a sport commander? Is it economy or sport? Ah, it's still sport commander. No, it's both. It's a slash. Of course. So yeah, the sport commander as an assault force. Interesting choice. Google Frog with a strike commander, much more typical to move that forward. But economy commander, you don't... Or support commander, you don't usually see that move forward. Normally, that's kept in the back, but given that the back is rather inaccessible at the moment, and also the light particle beam commander, that's pretty powerful as a frontliner. Then, yeah, it makes sense sort of for, for Akronim to do that, but unfortunately Akronim is not able to really expand. I'm a bit surprised Akronim hasn't actually expanded back here at all. I don't think they've even tried. I mean, I think they have radar here. That's probably what it is. Let's see. Yeah, they have radar, so they know that Google Frog has taken that. Generally, it's good to assume that you're, if you're watching someone and they're doing something, they have radar. Because radar is a big deal. And Akronim, not confident in their micromanagement abilities, apparently. Or not confident that Google Frog doesn't have a bunch of stuff in the back. Because, hey, they might. They might have an entire force of glaze right back here, just in case, to come in as revenge. And that's not entirely wrong. There isn't one. But 4v5, especially the way this has been arranged, Akronim takes it and only one loss. Oh, no, two losses. They lost two glaze in the process. But, hey, 5 on 4, that's not terrible. So Akronim is probably going to be switching to Warriors first. Google Frog switching to, or getting a few emergency hammers. They want to take out this front line pretty quick. 
while also getting us okay this is what we got to pay attention to this scythe right here that's gonna be a big deal and that scythe is is it gonna run into the lotus yes it oh no just about runs into it almost loses the decloak radius but that scythe is going to be a small problem at this point there's not a whole lot of targets the wind generators are a good target as usual you generally want to go for wind gens those are a good target so I would say yeah obviously grab those but otherwise, it's kind of... There's a caretaker. There isn't a caretaker now. That's a good target. But otherwise, it's kind of hard to say. And now both players going for hammers. I'm getting some of their own just, just to be sure they can get through. Google Frog appears to be just scouting at this point. Trying to figure out, are there targets? What is there? What do I have that I can use for against Aquanim here? And what does Aquanim have? Right now, there's really no good targets other, other than the caretaker. That would be a good target. Or these metal extractors. That's another good target. Well, a bit of a risky target, but it's going to be what Google Frog is going for. Two hits for each, and Google Frog, as long as they pay attention, should be able to take out all of these and give themselves the economic advantage. Because at this point, Akinem once again has had the economic lead. They have... This area is actually open. This, this particular constructor here is idle and needs to go over here. Because this hill right here, that's open. It's It needs to be defended, of course, but it is open, and I don't think Google Frog... Okay, Google Frog does have knowledge. These two metal extractors are still safe. Not that Akronim has any way of knowing that, but yeah, the, the near two metal extractors are perfectly safe. Or at least they aren't being watched. But the other ones are. Which will be a bit of a problem. And that scythe only manages to get two from the looks of it, not all three. Actually, on the return trip, should be going for the third one. But Akronim is pretty much on par. Like, Akronim and Google Frog are pretty much at parity when it comes to their economy. The variations are fairly small, and at this stage of the game, like plus 20 or so, variation of 2 or 3 is still not trivial, but it's not as big as it would be at the start of the game. So Akunum can... S okay, Akunum's a bit behind. 5 behind I would be worried about. 10 behind actually is what we're looking at here. That's definitely something to be worried about. So Akunum right now, they will want to take some territory. They won't want to take this area over here, but they might be... Are they going to be afraid of the science or what? Like, I don't understand why this... Okay, that was just idle. That's all the problem was. But this is a nice open target. These sides will probably... Oh, no, they're going to bypass. Never mind. They're not going for it at all. They're going to be aware of it, but they're going to bypass it completely because there's no point wasting two more sides on that. Especially when there's already one in the base. It looks like the base is probably going to get pretty heavily attacked. Three sides? It's not as... Not able to take out everything. The factory would take about seven or eight sides before it goes down. Like, before it goes down, before dying. But yeah, those three sides are going for the wind generators, taking out all of Akinem's energy, so that's going to be a huge blow. Akinem's going to lose all that energy. So, at the same time, Akinem did try to go for a raid in the southeast side of the map, but looks like that wasn't successful according to the minimap. One metal extractor down, but all of the energy production, that's the biggest thing. All of the energy, pretty much, for Akinem was destroyed. There is still a little bit here and there, but... Mostly just from the new wind generators that were just built. So Akinem is just broken even. And yeah, this area here took out a metal extractor, but not too much. Akinem is now aware that Google Frog's over in the southeast. But otherwise, it doesn't really know too much. And Akinem still unable to take the south center. And Google Frog continually attacking along that side. Not going for any straightforward attacks, though. That's the thing. If Akinem were to set up either a Stardust or a couple warriors right here, they would have nothing to... And maybe one right here, too. They would have nothing... Actually, here. They would have nothing to worry about. They'd be able to expand for free, and then they'd be able to just push forward, because Google Frog has been relying entirely on sneaky tactics. I granted that's what Kogibot does best, but they have been relying entirely on it, so straightforward tactics, if the sneaky tactics are countered, will at least have an advantage for, like, a minute or so. Which, in 0k time, is possibly an eternity. Like, really, a minute is a long time in this game, so... I'm not trying to trivialize it, but yeah, that's... It would be something that would be a matter of speed. Akinem would have to be quick about it, but they would also be able to pull it off, probably. However, we do see a light vehicle factory. Are we going to see levelers popping up, or are we going to see scorchers just to deal with, sp like, speedy things? Or not so speedy things. I can see levelers to get rid of for crowd control, although, once again, I can see warriors being a better option. I could see... What else could I see here? I guess I could see Dom well, not Dominatrix wouldn't make any sense. There'd be no point to do that. Be the this is the worst time to use a Dominatrix, so there's not that. Ravager would kind of make sense as a direct assault force. So I could see that. 
but I don't know if that'd be, that'd probably be unlikely once again. Too many glaives. Scorchers, maybe, but once again, I mean, if the glaives don't work, the scorchers will work a little bit better, but not much. And more glaives coming back here. Aquanim still not setting up Stardusts or setting up Warriors or whatever. They don't have any preparations back here, so the glaives keep tearing this down. They keep rebuilding it, but they're not properly securing it. And this area over here, the southwest, sorry, northwest, that's going to be a problem too. That's pretty much dead. That Lotus is the only defense, but against six glaives, that's nothing. That's paper. Google Frog, I think at this point, is probably going to win pretty handily. I could go for a counterattack, which will be of some use, but not a whole lot. Google Frog just avoiding that Lotus. There is a Stardust in the main base, that's good, but why just there? Why not build it everywhere? I mean, all this, all this stuff could have been saved if a Stardust had been built on this ramp, or possibly, or, and also here. Both these places, if a Stardust in each one, it would have been saved. Or at least would have been far easier to save. But at this point, no. Akinum's lost pretty much everything. Which is rather unfortunate, but yeah, Akinum really should have switched to Warriors. I mean, they clearly weren't focusing as much on Glaive production. Or some production period. And also, I don't think their micro is necessarily as good as Google Frog's. Google Frog, it's just that's the thing. I, I don't mean it as an insult, it's just that's the thing you gotta kind of bear in mind, is that generally a good time to switch is when you're not able to out-micro your opponent. And then you switch to Warriors, and then you switch to Rockos, and then it gets into a different... It gets out of the Raider phase of the game. But unfortunately, Octum did not do that. If they had, they probably would have not died right then. But there is a third game. What? what the, okay, seriously, there's an engine bug here. This, this wind counter thing, I... This should not happen. What literally happens in the wind counter, for those of you who might be curious... This shouldn't happen, because the wind counter, literally at the game over, when the game ends, it shouldn't have to do this, because it should just look at the winning teams, because that should be sent. There's, that's another problem. But because it doesn't have the winning teams as an option for some bizarre reason, instead, it looks at how many units are left. Or rather, who is, is dead. There's, there's a property you can get if you look up what the team information is, or the player information. If you look up what... You can look up who's dead. And if... Basically, it tries to figure out where, what group of players is not dead. So, what team in the common usage? What team is not dead? Whichever one's left, that must be the winner. But for some strange reason, it seems to think that both teams aren't dead. And then just picks the first one. I'm really not sure why that's happening. I've been testing it, it just seems like it, the, that particular call-in is not working properly. I gotta write a bug for it. I, f I forgot about that. I Anyway, that aside, let's go on to the next game. I'll just correct the win counter before the next game. Yeah, Google Frog up was one, two games. I guess it must have been a first of three or just play three games and go. Anyway, be back in just a minute. Next one will be on Sands of War. So, yeah. Sorry if you don't really like C maps. I don't know if I'm gonna close it out on that, though. I think I will. Ah. Was that? I'm not sure if I'm gonna close that out on that or not. I think I will because the other games I have lined up are also series, and I don't really want to do too many games just because I'm not feeling well. Anyway, stay tuned. It'll be once again Goo Frog and Akin, this time on Sands of War. So sorry if you don't like C maps, but it, it'll be short at least. Stay tuned. <laughs> 